Hey, 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 planty people. It's your boy, Jordan. I know that I haven't made a video in a while. The holidays have got me, gal. And also, I just got back from vacation. Uh, me and Dalton went to the Dominican Republic with my brother. I'll put some videos here of um, what it looked like there. It was beautiful, but I am back and my plants are screaming. They look not well. So I was going to show you what is going on with my plants that is making me say that. Um, I know that in my last video, I said that we would do the top 2023 plants of the year. And I'm just going to go ahead and talk about them. Um, the first one I'm going to put a clip of is here. And that is my Alocasia Variegated Friday. Um, she was clearly a top plant for me for 2023. She grew so well. Um, she did great all year long. And at the end of December, I separated her out. So now in 2024, she is struggling a bit. And I will show you that later in the video. Um, then um, the second plant that is MVP for 2023 is going to be my Thai Constellation. And I will put a video here of my Tycon. And basically, the reason why um, it's going to get a 2023 MVP spot is because I got it as a nothing. It's now a large plant. It's getting the double fenestrations. And it also survived thrips. So, like, it has had a long year in 2023. But despite all that, it has remained growing. And then, to round it out, the third place plant for me... Um, is going to be my philodendron scott moranium and I will post a clip of it here and I had to um, chop that plant as well um, when I got my thrip outbreak um, I treated the plant held it for a few months I ended up selling the bottom cut off and the top cut um, I kept and rerouted and that's what it looks like um, it's just been a very, very easy growing philodendron. Um, so I think I'll also give a call out for a fourth place, which would be my Monstera Aria and it's pushing a leaf now. I'll put a video here of what it's looking like. And just because, um, I got it as like a single leaf cutting, it was like nothing. And it gave me like three or four leaves without any problems. And it has really beautiful color. It's one of my favorite plants. So those are the top four plants of 2023 for me. Um, not a full length video, but 2023 is over. So we have got to move on. Um, what I'm going to be doing today is making water because all my plants are dying of thirst. Um, you're going to see me take a lot of my poles to an actual shower because all my poles are dry and they just need to be like showered down completely. I try not to do that a lot just because I have so many poles. It's annoying to do all the movement. Um, and then also I need to talk about like some things I'm struggling with. Uh, number one is that I was in like 86 degree weather in Punta Cana Republic, <laughs> Dominican Republic. And I came home to freaking 15 degrees weather here in Kentucky. Okay, guys. Um, this is out my window. So I'd say we have like three inches of snow or so on the ground. It is lightly snowing. I know you can't see it, but it is like lightly still snowing. And, you know, I just landed from my flight last night. I got in at about one in the morning and uh, the roads were terrible. So I'm going to show you a pic of what I was doing yesterday around noon. And then I'm going to show you this terrible video of us driving home. Um, and to be all of that, the humidity in my house, and that says 66 degrees, but it's like 71 degrees in my house, but the humidity is super low and I'm getting like problems from it. Like look, this leaf unwell, um, this leaf unwell. So Anyway, we're struggling. That leaf, I don't know if it's unwell or not. 
but it's just like, come on now, I'm just struggling. Also, probably since the last video, I moved a ton of my plants back downstairs because I felt like I was ignoring them upstairs. So, just a little quick shot of what my plants are doing. Now that it is so cold, I also have to show you that I'm wearing an Ugg Moo Moo. So, call me out in the comments if you want. This is what I'm wearing. Um, and we are going to get started and make some water. So, um, I'm also going to talk about, um, I guess like my 2024, um, plant goals in this video. Um, I think that I'm going to have to downsize my plants a little bit. Um, not like a ton, but some of them just aren't sparking the joy and that's okay. Um, I am also going to limit myself um, on the amount of plants that I can bring home. And it's a very specific goal. I think that there are 12 months in a year. So I'm going to limit myself to bringing home 12 plants this year. And that doesn't mean that I have to get a plant a month. But it just means that if I'm bringing in more than 12 plants this year, then drop something. Then I'm bringing home too many plants. Um, so, yeah, we'll go over some of my quote unquote wish list plants that I plan on getting this year. And uh, it's not going to be like a list of 12 plants. Like, it's not like a definite list, but um, I'm going to give you guys like six or eight plants that I've got my eye on and I think that I'm going to try to get this year. And then the other six to four spots will just be opportunistic based on availability and ease of obtaining them and if I actually want them or not. Because, I don't know, uh, for me, lots of times I'll see a plant and I'll be like, oh, I want that. And then I get it and it doesn't grow the way that I like. Or um, whatever happens and it just changes changes the deal for me. It's like not what I wanted. So, that. Okay, so talking about downsizing my collection and like why that might be something that I want to do is because... I'm really, I really like um, growing plants on poles, and I like how they upsize. Um, it's, I think, what like drawn me into house plants in the first place is like when I was like watching YouTube videos and people had like a moss pole and like had grown their um, epipremnum up a pole or whatever, and it like sized up and looked really cool. And so, obviously, I got some moss poles and I started to do that, and I started seeing like good growth from it but um now i think that i just have so many plants that it's hard to keep those poles watered as often as what they should be to be like the best growth that they can get and so i want to keep plants on poles um but i'm getting like some yellowing in the leaves um, one of them that comes to mind is like my Manjula Pothos. I'll put a picture over here. Um, and like I am really harsh, I think, on my plants. Like if something is starting to yellow or get a brown spot or something, I'm like a very quick person to like chop my plant. I want my plants to be like aesthetically pleasing. But, um, yeah, that is one reason I'm thinking I might downsize because I want to prioritize the plants that I prefer um, and give them like better care and like hopefully their poles won't dry out as much and like I won't get the yellowing. Um, oh, dang. I guess also I need to add a fifth place 2020 um, MVP and that would be my Cebu Blue um, picture here. Now... Uh, obviously, as soon as I mention all these plants as MVPs for 2023, 
things are going to go wrong with plants and we got to let that not get to us. My Cebu Blue started to get like some weird browning on like the lower leaves. So I had to take, I chopped those leaves off and then I went ahead and I cut my Cebu Blue. So it's no longer connected to the base. Um, it's just got the roots within the pole that's keeping it alive. And then the next leaf, it looks like it's sized down. It's still fenestrated. I just don't think it's like sized up again, um, which is to be expected. I chopped my plant. Um, so I'm not too, too worried about it, but um, it's growth for 2023 still warrants it to be a 2023 MVP. Um, she just might struggle a little bit here in the beginning of 2024, like the rest of my plants, because the weather is crazy, winter is harsh, and um, we're not living our best life, but we're going to attempt to persevere. Okay, guys, sorry, I know the lighting's not the best in here. This is just my spare bathroom, so it's easier to bring my plants in here, and that's my Marble Queen Pothos, Monstera Sotobacana, Cebu Blue, Manjula, and then maybe some that you can't see are my Jacinia Pothos and my Monstera Dubia. And the reason why I brought these poles in here is because they're like my taller poles, so they're a little bit harder to um, get into like my sink um, to give them a shower with that nozzle head. So I have a nozzle head up there that like comes down and I can spray them down. Um, the first thing I want to do is just regulate the temperature of the water and then just let the warm water kind of run for a little bit and like maybe create some like steam in here and then I'm going to turn it down to where it's like luke warm or luke cold or whatever you want to call it and uh, spray my poles really thoroughly. So when you're doing this, like what I kind of found out is that like you have to be careful because your poles will move even though you don't touch them or like you don't think the stream is that fast, they'll move because like the water weight is like redistributing and if you don't have like a really sturdy pole, like your pole like weight will shift and like so like you can actually obviously break your plant because you're going to drop it. But um, what I'm going to do now, I like, gave everybody like a light shower. And so I'm just going to like leave these in the shower for the moment. Like so that like all this can um, dry off of the leaves and stuff. But I'm also going to come back in here uh, with my fertilizer water and put fertilizer through all of them. Also, I need to add some moss to my Monstera Dubia pole. Um, some of these I'm not like the happiest with. I'm just like trying to get them to a point where I can um, chop them and still have like a complete moss pole on one section so that I can just add a second moss pole on top and continue them to climb. Uh, particularly like the Cebu Blue is chopped right here. Um, that's not like where I plan on rooting it like because that's like pretty long with like no leaves. What I'll probably do like the pole is here. So I'll probably try to chop here here and lose this bottom leaf off of it and then I'll have everything else growing up a pole but I need it to put out about like two more leaves so that it's at the top of this pole um but yeah some these poles some of them are uh needing a little TLC and like I said this is why I'm kind of contemplating downplaying my or downsizing my collection because I would like to get these poles the attention that they need so that they're not like that top leaf up there. I don't know that it's going to downsize, but like just looking at it, it doesn't look like it's going to be the same size as that one. And then same thing, I told you my manjula has been like yellowing pretty good. Um, I'm hoping that the Marble Queen will um, bounce back. She is droopy, droopy, droopy right now from my vacation. Uh, honestly, the Stitha Pecana looks the best and she's already on like three poles. So I could chop her like right here 
and then start her over if I wanted to do that, which is something I might do in another video. But for now, we're gonna let these guys dry off. Okay guys, so we sprayed down my Big Moss poles before um, I had went up there, I had put in, in my, um, uh, 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 why can I think, silica. Um, and you have to let that sit for a little bit and I stirred it real good. So now I'm going to do my general hydroponics. I think before I left, I used a lot of my foliage focus and like watered everybody with it, um, just like around, um, which was, fine i think i like that better obviously because it's like one step and you don't have to add so many things and like wait and stir and do things in a certain order but this is much more economical like you can it's like much more affordable the foliage focus is just like expensive um so i've got about four gallons of water and i'm measuring 20 mls or so of each one of my general hydroponics fertilizers and I also I mean this like comes natural now because I've been doing this for like a year and a half or a year and something with the general hydroponics but like when I started <laughs> I like labeled them like number one number two um but yeah, so my pole situation is a situation. Um, I also have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, um, like small to medium um, moss poles that we're going to water here in the sink. Um, I, it's just too many poles to, because when you put a plant on a pole, in my experience, um, even the like plastic halfback poles, because I usually use those. I'm very unhappy with the wire poles that like the self-made ones. It just like does not retain uh, water for like time whatsoever. Um, but uh, generally, um, the problem is is that even with the closed back poles, I find in my environment, um, which is about like. 70 degrees and 45 to 55 percent humidity usually um the humidity is super ran down right now obviously because i'm running the heat hardcore um because i'm freezing to death um but i have to water my poles like twice a week um for them to be like happy um without all this like yellowing and stuff which is like getting pretty annoying um because twice a week is too much watering. I Like, it's just a lot of work. Um, and I guess maybe it wouldn't be if um, I didn't have so many poles. And then also, like, all the other plants on top of that. But I do. And also, not to mention, like, um, I just went on this, like, eight-day vacation. And um, I work as a nurse practitioner. And sometimes, like, I have to work, like, six 12-hour shifts in a row. And it's like... When those things are happening, these poles are not getting watered twice a week. Um, and so that's why I'm having like the yellowing on my leaves and like it's a main problem. Like these plants were thriving um, when they were being taken care of, you know, the way they should have. And also like in a little bit easier conditions, which are like the growing seasons, spring and summer. So yeah. That's that. Um, I will say, like, the plants that are not giving me a lot of fuss is obviously my Hoya. Like, none of them look bad at all. Um, and that's also why I don't want to get rid of a ton of my Hoya. Because, um, I hate to say this, like, most of them in my collection are, like, cinnamon forget them plants. Like, you can water them every 10 days instead of every seven, like if you have to, like they just aren't as picky as philodendron and even monstera. I mean, monstera, I feel like are less picky than phyllos as well, but still some of them are, get droopy and such. Um, and then I think like my water's mix, I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit. Um, and then we can get into 
some of my goals for 2024, like as we water and as I kind of show you the plants. Okay guys, this is my Syngonium Tricolor after spraying her down, watering her and like getting her pole moist. I'll say these small moss poles are a no. I just would not do anything on a small moss pole ever again. Like they're just not, they don't stay wet. But um, the Syngonium Tricolor, like I love that leaf. And every once in a while, it gets me going with the variegation and I really like it. But otherwise, I don't love this plant, like how the pink gets all like weird and murky after a while. I don't love it. So this might be one of those plants that I plan on um, rehoming or doing something different with. Okay, so this is my Soteroy. That's the newest leaf. I don't know if it's gonna be wonky or not yet. I just um, watered her pole and her pot. Um, it's on this wire pole, which I 10 out of 10 do not recommend. They're terrible, they dry out really quickly. Um, I prefer the ones with the closed backs, but um, this uh, plant's beautiful. And for 2024, um, it's part of my like goal plant to kind of like focus on and um, grow up into like a big, healthy, beautiful plant. So we will look back at this next year and see if that was something we were able to do. Hopefully this leaf don't turn out too wonky. It's just like a little bit, I don't know if that's yellow or if that's just where it came out fresh. So we'll see what it looks like in a little bit. Okay guys, this is my philodendron painted lady. She has one vine back here that's on the pole and then there's one vine up here that's um, just like free, kind of just growing however it wants. Um, she's just getting big and like reaching for sun and like doing the most. Um, I love this plant. I love the red um, petioles and then the green and yellow like you guys know I'm a sucker for yellow variegation but I'm just not so sure that a pole was like the correct decision for her and like I've been thinking here recently maybe it's still okay maybe I just need to get rid of this like front vine and keep growing her up so I think I might try that first before like removing this plant from my collection because it's, I, like I said, it's like the red petiole and the yellow variegation is very much my thing. But uh, we gotta do something different with her than this because she's a tad unruly. This is my philodendron white princess. I just gave her water. And um, I've thought about rehoming this a couple times, but every time I do, she just puts out like a new beautiful, <laughs> variegated leaf um she's like does this some this is like some yellowing um so i don't know i can't get rid of her i've you know thought about it numerous times but um what i'm gonna do i'm gonna at least grow her to the top of this pole and then see if i would want to extend and then let her crawl onto the other pole once i do extend and then give her a chop and hopefully um, she'll continue this like variegation and maybe I can get rid of some of these leaves that like I'm not like the happiest with um, but I don't regret putting her on a pole I think it's gonna eventually pay off we're just not quite there yet this is like hopefully her little ugly stage you know what I'm saying Okay guys, this is my Syngonium Mojito. Um, I got it as this single leaf cutting and then this leaf, I think it was a top cut, was already sprouting out of it when I got it. Um, and then obviously like in my care, these three leaves came out, which are beautiful. This is one of my favorite Syngonium so far, just like seeing it from the get go. Um, I also have it on a small pole, which like I said, do not recommend, but um, this is in tree fern fiber, which is really cool. I don't know if you can tell like how rooted because of the glare from my window, but this um, Syngonium really likes just pure tree fern fiber and um, I like it like this. So maybe I will take a cutting of it because like Syngoniums don't really size up. 
Um, I just find that like they're like more healthy and have like better vigor if they continue to root into something. Um, so that's why I put it on a pole, but I might um, chop this down and take it completely off a pole and get like a little bush going of this uh, Syngonium Mojito. Cause like, look at this leaf, <laughs> like beautiful. Favorite Syngonium probably. Okay, this is my Epipremnum Marble Panatum. And um, it's got beautiful color, obviously. I've got it as like a one or two leaf cutting from Plant Haven, Toronto. Um, it's almost up its moss pole. It only has about this much more. Once it gets to a new moss pole, I do plan on um, chopping it. And then whatever's down here, I'll probably propagate. But um, the only thing, my only complaint, which is not like a true complaint because this is beautiful as it is, but like it's not really sizing up. Um, I don't see like a ton of roots in the pole, but like there's like this one big root in the pole. So I don't know what we got to do to make this happen, but we're trying our best. She's in high light. Um, she just, and she seems to be growing well and like, I don't wanna say thriving cause she's obviously not um, thriving, thriving or she'd be sizing up, but she's like popping off. She's fenestrating. I think this leaf is gonna be like the most fenestrated one if I can tell, but um, keeping her for sure. Um, She's one of my favorites, just as far as like color goes. And I think once I get some size on her, she will be beautiful. Okay guys, this is my Monstera Aria um, and Sona A. And um, I'm not ready to give her up yet. Once again, like I said, you guys know my leakness, yellow variegation. She had some browning on this leaf that I cut away. Um, the only problem so far is that, you know, slight browning in certain places and then like, each leaf, if you can tell, like it's kind of like becoming less variegated. This one doesn't have any variegation. And as far as I can tell, or maybe it does have variegation, but it's like very unnoticeable. As far as I can tell, neither does that one. So I think I'm going to go ahead and chop this off camera and then uh, maybe propagate that piece and see what happens. And then see if I can get some growth from this leaf. There we go. Made the cut. Cutie. And then I'll show you. Here's the little top piece. And I will just plop that in some water and see if I can get some roots growing from here. Okay guys, so I also have a Adansona A Albo variegated and um, this plant requires a lot of humidity and I'm just not giving it to it. Um, I have quite a bit of leaves with browning on them from this plant. So I think like my plan is to start over and um, chop each node. And then I know I'll get some that is like turns all white and some that's all green. And you know, hopefully I'll get some that is like variegated appropriately. The reason why I've let this go on for so long is because like I've got like a beautifully variegated one. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and maybe take a top cut of this now. I don't know. Boom, 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 boom. So we will see what happens there, what I decide to do. Now I think this is the Adansona Indo Mint. I don't know if you guys can see the colors like really beautiful and the leaves are like these like long skinnier looking leaves. Um, out of all of my Adansona tops, this is the one that I plan to prioritize. Um, I'll just like the color. It doesn't seem to have the same humidity requirements as the other ones. The only problem that I see is that I put this on a small pole um, that I don't like love, but um, I'm gonna let this 
leaf here shoot out. And then I think I'm going to try to um, propagate it, put it on a new pole, yada, yada, yada. Um, I might even uh, air layer this leaf that's coming out. And that way I have like a root system and can just put it on a pole without like having too much shock going on. Cause I would like these leaves if they do size up. Cause so far, I don't know if they just like stay this general color or if they keep like getting skinnier and longer. So we'll see. But this is my favorite and sunlight top so far, the Indo Mint. Okay, the next plant is my Epipanatum Albo. And once again, got this as a single leaf cutting. It's grown to this size and it's fenestrating a little bit. It's just trying to figure out what it's wanting to do. Much like my marble panatum, it is just not there yet, but I am gonna prioritize this pole and give it good light and give it good fertilizer and keep it watered and see if I cannot get this to be a nice, beautiful, fenestrated um, albo panatum because um, I like the Cebu Blue, I like the Marble, and I like the Panatum Elbow. And I think um, ultimately like Epipremnum plants, Epipremnum, are um, my favorite genus, probably. All right, this is my Philodendron Majestic. And it's not quite on a pole, it is um, air layered here. And then I have a pole behind it that I'm gonna eventually try to anchor this to so that it can start climbing. But um, it started out very, very, very little. And then I got this from it and I air layered it. And then I got this from it and I decided to keep air layering it before I had it like potted up. I just kept air layering it. So like it was sizing up still. And now it's pushing this leaf here. And this is probably one of the highest priority poles that I have just because this is a beautiful, beautiful plant. I love the heart shaped leaf. I love the silver. And then I love how fast growing it is. And it's a hybrid philodendron, so it's a little bit better with like pests and just like staying vigor looking. It's had, got its hybrid vigor going on. So um, my philodendron majestic, I plan to prioritize in 2024. Next on my priority list is my philodendron splendid. Um, I got this as a single leaf cutting um actually i chopped the actual leaf that i had so this was the first leaf that came out in my care sorry i'm like checking it like do you have spider mites no okay so first leaf that came out in my care second leaf third leaf finally sized up just a little bit and then the fourth leaf look how beautiful now if oh and velvety okay i love this plant um, so high priority for 2024 is Philodendron Splendid. Okay, and then lastly, I have this Philodendron Tortum. Now you can kind of tell all this is small. These are the two leaves that come out in my care so far, the large ones. And I attribute that to this moss pole wholeheartedly. This is a tree firm fiber moss pole and Look how rooted it is into this thing. I don't know if you can even tell because of the glare, but there is a huge root system going right down the middle. And so, um, yeah, I plan on still trying to grow this big and as pretty as it's getting already. Um, the good thing about it is it's got short internodal spacing so i don't think that i'm going to have to put it on another pole anytime soon so in that case the small pole is workable for now hey guys so it's the next day um my husband's sick he's back here on the couch and um i had to go get my dogs because we boarded them for the vacation and they both have kennel cough so we're struggling over here um, all my plants are not looking the best just because the humidity when I got home was like 29 to 33% depending on where you are in the house. 
Um, which is all because of it being so cold and the heat having to run so continuously. So we're all just struggling. Um, I did get some lights. I think these are Barina T5. So I'm going to unbox these really quickly. And while I'm unboxing them, I was going to go over, um, some of the plants that I, um, had talked about earlier that I was like going to have on my quote unquote wish list for 2024. Um, this isn't like a comprehensive list and I don't even know that I'll actually get these plants. I'll put pictures here whenever I mention them, but, um, I wanted to, um, at least give like an idea of like what 12 plants that like could potentially be, um, sought out this year. The first one is a fern leaf cactus. And um, basically, I really like my rickrack cactus, which is sitting right here. It's grown a ton for me. And basically, I love that plant. Um, and it's just so easy of care. Like when the humidity goes down, I don't have to worry about it. With, if anything happens, I know that plant's gonna be fine. Um, so I like ease of care plants, obviously, um, but, um, fern, wild ferns, um, fern leaf cactus is kind of like the first one that I seen on YouTube that I thought, yeah, like I need to get one of those in my collection. So that is one of the plants that I want to add to my collection in 2024 um the second plant sorry i'm like looking down at my ipad because that's what i have these plants saved to the second plant is um a monstera mint um so i have the tycon and i have an elbow but um it had my a lot of my monsters ended up getting thrips um it got thrips and um, I cut it back and I treated it and then I sewed off like all the bottom cut leaves. So I just have my elbow top cut and I haven't repotted it yet. It's still upstairs in the stratum. Um, and then I have the Monsera Aria that's doing really well. So I, Monsera is one of my favorite um, genus. I think the um, Epiprimnum are my favorite favorite just for the ease, but, um, I really like Monstera and if they're, you know, new color varieties, I'm probably going to try to get them. So, um, Mint Monstera, I think will be on the list for 2024. Um, I don't know, that was just like sitting on top. Okay. A box within a box. Don't you love that? Um, so, the third plant that I have on my list is a peperomia. And I know, like, you don't really hear a lot of people talking about peperomias um, on their channels and stuff. But um, I have a peperomia um, frost that I grew from, like, nothing. And I really like it. And then I have, like, a... Uh, Peperomia reticulata that I really like. Um, so anyway, I saw a Sarcophylla on um, Good Growing from YouTube. Um, her name's Emma. She's like over in the UK or something like that. Um, and I really liked it. It's not like your typical looking um, Peperomia. It's got really thick leaves. It almost reminds me of like a really large leafed Hoya or like, and also the markings on it kind of remind me of like a Anthurium. So, um, Peperomia Sarcophylla is on my wish list for 2024. Um, and then I have been wanting a Monstera Burl Mark Flame for a while. And basically, um, that is the Lobster Claw Monstera. And same situation. I like Monstera. I like the way that Monstera grow. I like that you can just like throw them in like high light. Or you can't throw them. You still need to transition them into high light. But like you don't have to worry about like 
being in too high light in most situations, like as long as you just have them in your conditions. Um, so, and I like the lobster call look, and I think that it looks unique for Monstera. So, I've been trying to get a hold of that. Uh, my friend Steven has a Epipanatum yellow flame that I've seen for the first time. And so, I've added that to my wish list because you guys know I have a Cebu Blue. And I have um, the Marble Panatum and the Albo Panatum. So, um, the Yellow Flame is really cool looking. Um, and I love Epipremnum. So, that is why the um, Panatum Yellow Flame is on my wish list. Um, kind of an odd um, plant that's on my 2024 wish list are pinguiculas. And I think like, um, once again, I think the first ones I saw was from Wild Fern's YouTube channel. And um, they're carnivorous plants that, and like there's like certain care for carnivorous plants, which is why I don't have any, cause I just like don't know them. I never got into them. But they're like cute little fuzzy looking plants that like flower and that once again like you can just give them good light and I think you have to like keep like distilled water and you don't fertilize it. So there's just some different care needs that I need to learn about them first and I would like to get those closer to like summer. Um, because Or spring because I don't want to deal with like the light lighting I think it'll just be easier to set them in a window or something like that like at that time um and then also with the pinguiculas like in my head um I feel like I might get like a couple of them so I'm just like bundling those as like one plant because um I have like this little container in my mind that I'm gonna fill with moss and then have like a little pinguicula garden or something in my mind. I, that might be like a terrible idea. Um, so we'll see about that. And then um, I saw obviously Syngonium chia pants before, but the variegated chia pants, I'm seeing more of those. So, I want the variegated Chia Pants. It's on my list. Um, I just like the way that it looks not like a Syngonium, but it grows like a Syngonium. It looks a little bit more durable and flat looking. So, Syngonium Chia Pants is the only Syngonium that I can think of that will be on my... Um, 2024 wish list and then I didn't put any Hoyas on this list because um, for me Hoyas have kind of always been like opportunistic like I just see the Hoya and if I like it then I want it and if I don't I don't so I'm sure I'll get a Hoya in 2024 but I'm not gonna like pick a particular one just because I never have um I do have two philodendron that I have my eye on that I could technically say are on my wish list. And they're not like hard to get. I could get them anytime. Um, I just haven't. And that is a philodendron glorious and a um, El Choco red. So I think that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight or nine, um, 2024 wish list plants that I want. And like I said, even, and I'm not striving for 12 plants either. I'm just going to set a goal for myself that I don't get more than 12 plants this year. Um, and I'm also think that I'm going to set the rule for myself that if I get a plant, then I need to lose a plant. So, those are going to be some hard stipulations, but I do have in my mind some plants that I want to get rid of, and that will be another video. Um, I was going to show you real quick. Here are my T5 connector cords. These will connect like from lot to lot, and then I have four 
bases that they connect to to the um, electric socket. So there's four of those. And then these are the lights I got. I think I got one, two, three, four, five. So I got eight of these. And this is the two foot light. And then they connect to each, they can connect to each other depending on like how you want to set them up. So um, I got these for underneath some shelves because um, my plant room is going to stay like a plant room or like a cuttings room or uh, like I'm still going to keep some plants up there but like not a lot. I moved most of my plants back downstairs because I was finding that like they were like out of sight, out of mind. Um, and I enjoy my plants more downstairs so that I can keep my eye on them and um, water what needs watered and you know, whatever. So that's what's going on here. Um, I'm not gonna film me doing this because I already get frustrated doing crap like that, not on camera. But um, I did want to um, mention that I'm doing a 400 subscriber giveaway. So all you need to do is subscribe to my channel and then you need to go follow me on Instagram and I'll put my Instagram stuff down here. And um, then you need to go find the picture of my Syngonium Aria on Instagram. I'll put the picture here and then leave the comment giveaway on that picture and then that will put you on the list to get a cutting of a Syngonium Aria variegated um, pot of film. And I'll just um, mail that to um, you if you win it. And um, I think right now I'm close to 350 subscribers, so we're about 50 subscribers away. Um, thank you for coming to Kentucky Plant Daddy, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.